Avenue. Two members of the Jefferson 10 were laid to rest today. Pearl Young was a grandmother and the wife of a pastor. She's being remembered as a sweet person and one who could always make you laugh. Febin Casahoon spoke with loved ones of a woman known as Mother Pearl. Gatherings will never be the same without Mother Pearl Young's presence. But she was not only a mother, a spiritual mother to me, she was a mother to all that she came in contact with, you know, because the love and the compassion and the caring ways, it just can't be beat. Church friends calling her a gem, much like the meaning of her name. The 77 year old was a devout Christian, a Sunday school teacher and a great supporter of women's outreach. She um, fed the community pantries, uh, foster parent. So she'll just do anything for anybody. Wonderful woman, wonderful woman. I hate that this happened to her. Aisha Robertson, who mothered Pearl's grandchildren, says while she was heavily involved in the church, she was also intentional with educating the youth. Accepted any child. It didn't even have to come from her. It didn't have to be her child. Any child, any child. Always wanted to speak positivity into children so they can grow up to at least know right from wrong and no morals. That's why she started so young and, and put so much into children. We would have time to fellowship and talk and talk about different things and her words and her wisdom um, that she shared with not only me, but with others is, is you can't beat that. Pastor Lewis Rouse of Restoration Temple Assembly of God says while he appreciates the kindness pouring into Buffalo, he hopes people turn this gesture into a way of life in communities beyond Buffalo. I believe it's beautiful the way things are coming together now, but it shouldn't take such a tragedy for people to be nice to one another. People should be nice to one another because that's what God expects from us, not because of a tragedy. He added gun control should be the next step for lawmakers. I don't care what the senators and the governors and all those people, they need to get together. It's, it's not a Republican thing. It's not a Democratic thing. It's a people thing. Febin Calhoun, 7 News, Buffalo. Friends and family members also paying their final respects to the officer who stepped in front of the suspected gunman and simply tried to stop him. Aaron Salter Jr., retired from the Buffalo Police Department then worked security at Top Salter, shot the suspect, but his bullets could not get through the body armor the suspect was wearing. As loved ones mourned their loss, Buffalo Police honored the brave actions that Salter Jr. took. What really has to be truly comprehended is the amount of precious seconds by his forward actions, his fight, allowed people to run towards the back of the store and gave them precious seconds to escape. And because of that, people survived. Well, the Buffalo Police Department posthumously honoring Salter with the Medal of Honor and then promoted him to lieutenant. The family of another one of the victims has hired attorneys suggesting they might be preparing to file a lawsuit. Andre McNeil's family is working with a law firm that represented victims' families after the Sandy Hook shooting in 2012. They say the same weapon was used at Sandy Hook and at Tops. In February, nine Sandy Hook families reached a collective $73 million settlement with the gunmaker Remington. They were accused of putting profits ahead of public safety. One of the biggest local efforts to support victims, families, and survivors now has new leadership. Tops and the National Compassion Fund announcing a new steering committee. The group will help lead the important work of distributing the funds that have been donated to the Buffalo 514 Survivors Fund. Reverend Mark Blue from the Second Baptist Church in Lackawanna and Try It Distributing President Paul Mukwelich have been appointed now as co-chairs here. So far, this fund the Buffalo 514 Survivors Fund has raised more than $1.5 million. We have a link to that GoFundMe fundraiser available right now if you'd like to donate. It's available at WKBW.com. As the grieving process continues, so too does the legal process. Today, the Erie County DA's office says a gag order has been placed on the case against the suspect. John Flynn said last week he would not comment further until any new developments came to light. There is also uh, emotional support available for survivors and community members. The Johnny B. Wiley Center will be open all week long from 1 to 9 p.m. for that. Good neighbors stepping up and not just people 
who live here. Up next, one man's effort to try and support this grieving community decades after he left the city of good neighbors. Plus, Roadrunner, why a police officer was forced to chase down an out of control car. Investigators now say the death of a retired canine was the result of mistaken identity. Hasso was an officer with the Erie County Sheriff's Office. He disappeared late last month. Now the Chautauqua County Sheriff says a farmer mistook Hasso for a wild coyote and was trying to defend his farm. No charges here will be filed. You know, Western New York has been through so much over the last couple of weeks, and these stories are tough to hear, tough to report, all of it. Tough to comprehend, yeah. tough to even talk about. That's what we do. And tonight, another tragic story, another real tragic story affecting our community. The Niagara County Sheriff's Office says a two-year-old child died in a crash in Wheatfield. They say two SUVs collided at the intersection of Niagara Falls Boulevard and Cy Road. One child passed away here. An infant remains at Oshai Children's Hospital tonight. The name of the victim has not been released and so far charges have not been filed. Also tonight, the head of one of Western New York's largest companies skipped a scheduled court date. New Era CEO Christopher Cook faces a reckless endangerment charge. Cook is accused of trying to run over someone in a restaurant parking lot earlier this month. A surveillance camera recorded the incident. No one was seriously hurt and Cook is free tonight. He faces up to seven years in prison if he is convicted. Congratulations. New York State officially has its third lieutenant governor in the last nine months. Antonio Delgado was sworn in about an hour ago in Albany. He takes the job after spending the last three and a half years in Congress. Delgado replaces Brian Benjamin. He resigned after being charged with breaking campaign finance law. The one thing that does continue to amaze us almost two weeks later after the tragedy is all the support we have seen for the people of Western New York and one man who has not lived here for decades is showing us how much this community still means to him. Greg Schwert lives in Cleveland, has now made his third trip back and forth to Buffalo in the last 10 days, delivering food and other supplies. This Bill's backer from Cleveland proving that even if you leave Buffalo, right, Buffalo never leaves you. You're a family and that's what this is. It's, it's, it's trying to help out the extended family. Well, Schwert has delivered more than 1,600 pounds of food and supplies to feed more Western New York during his, get this, three trips again back mm -hmm. and forth from Cleveland to Buffalo. Oh, that's great. Dash cam video from the front of a police vehicle shows a pretty remarkable rescue. This video was taken on Brighton Road in the town of Tonawanda on May 14th. Officers say a vehicle hit several other cars, did not stop at red lights, and was on the wrong side of the road. Police say an elderly person was having a medical issue. They credit Officer Joe Cavallari for stopping the car. They gave him the nickname Roadrunner. That's a very appropriate road, road name. Mm. Yeah, looks like he's maybe done that before, yeah. right? Well, a place where families can have some summer fun will soon be back open. Splash World Water Park, site of the former Fantasy Island, going to be open all Memorial Day weekend. Can you believe it's already here? Memorial Day weekend? It's here. Fantasy Island closed two years ago, now under new ownership. IB Parks and Entertainment says daily operations will start on June 24th. And Michelle, they would love some summer weather to hit those slides, get things going to celebrate the big reopening. Can we do it? Well, June 24th is officially summer, so sure. <laughs> I don't have the forecast out that far, so we'll hope that that can happen for y'all. Well, if you joined us at noon, you did see some blue in the skies. Now it is gray out there, but the temps still feel pretty nice. You can see the clouds and the increase in seven super Doppler. We have a high pressure system sitting over us, but it is battling between this system just to the west. Temperatures wise, we're all over the place in terms of gains and losses in the temperature department. You're seeing 11 degrees warmer than we were this time yesterday, and the same thing with Dunkirk, but then only six degrees warmer and seven degrees warmer in Buffalo. Speaking of temperatures right now, you're seeing we're anywhere between the upper 60s and low 70s in the southern tier to mid to upper 70s, especially around the lakeshore, looking at 77 degrees in Dunkirk. Take another look at seven super Doppler. Those showers are on the way. I'm going to give you the wide view. Here it is. We have a batch of moisture. It is going to be a threat for us. I'll show you when it gets here in the future cast. Bus stop forecast, 64 degrees tomorrow. Pleasant start. You'll see some You'll see a few breaks of sunshine tomorrow, but we'll get in some of those uh, 
I'll just show you. Let's get into it. 11 p.m., getting in on some of those perhaps onesie twosies overnight in the morning, seeing a few showers. Winds coming out of the south. It is going to be breezy for your Thursday. You'll see a few showers in the afternoon. We really don't start seeing the bulk of the rain until you get into the overnight. And look at these reds. You have a line organized here. Some showers and thunderstorms going from Thursday night, and those are going to linger into Friday. So we talked about the winds. This is probably the last time I'll be able to give you one of these. So where's my trash can? We got to toss it and find out where it's going to go. It's going to be tipped over nearby. Here's why your wind gusts are going to be in the upper 20s to 30 miles an hour afternoon, and then they're going to start to wind down as you head into the evening and overnight. So speaking of nighttime, lows in the 60s with a stray shower. Otherwise, you'll be partly cloudy. Going into that super seven day times are going to be in the 80s on Thursday. Like I said, you'll see those showers going later into the overnight. Friday, you've got some showers in the morning, but let me break it down for you, show you what it's going to look like. In the morning, you'll see some showers. Then in the afternoon, you'll get in some spotty showers or perhaps some intermittent showers. You don't start to see things dry out until later Saturday and then into your Sunday. So here's what it's going to shape up looking like for your holiday weekend. You're looking Saturday for those morning showers and then some intermittent showers as it starts to dissipate. Sunday is the Buffalo Marathon. Here's what it's looking like in the temp department. 50s, nice at 9, 70s by the afternoon. And we're really looking at the 80s as you go into the first half of that work week. All right, looks good. Thank you, Michelle. Up next here, going green. The difference gardens and greenhouses are making communities all across the country. Well, here's some good news. Community members are using their green thumbs to help improve their neighbors' lives. And today is good to know. We see how community gardens and high-tech greenhouses are really making a difference. We've got radishes right over here. More zucchini. Helping kids and helping keep their bellies full. That's exactly what these students in Colorado are doing by growing fresh vegetables to give to their classmates. And they're doing it by using solar greenhouses. It's all part of an after school program that teaches kids about agriculture, nutrition, and the environment. Their goal is to use the fresh food for the cafeteria salad bar. I think it is important just so you know what you're getting and to make sure everything is like healthy for you. Some things are harder to grow, so I want what I put in there to be uh, like accessible and kind of easy. This is a new twist on the Little Free Library concept. Check out the Milwaukee Seed Library. It's like a Little Free Library, but with vegetable, herb, and flower seeds. The mission is to promote sustainable living and encourage people to garden. Gardening is way easier than you think. It's also very therapeutic and is something that you have control over, uh, and it feeds you for free. <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually still chewing on a little bit of kale right now. Kale, yeah. This community garden is helping people save money and eat healthy at the same time. A nonprofit in San Diego is growing fresh fruits and vegetables for the community. They say with healthy food, you can change the outcomes for people in the area. You can learn the garden. It's, they're very easy to put together. Uh, and seed is uh, cost efficient. It's very inexpensive. And, and, and then now you're going to be feeling better and you won't be spending as many dollars on your health care. Uh, I like that. You, I, I like to garden. I like to try my is, best. It is Stay. good for, for yeah. mental health, in my opinion. Yeah. Planting things, watering things. Taking Are you good at it? Taking care of things? No. Okay. I'm not good at it, but I enjoy the process. Me too. Uh, I just, you know, I get sad when they ultimately... Uh, yeah, don't work out. Don't work out. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Coming up at 5.30 tonight, we're going to dive into the debate over gun control. Yeah, we speak to a member of Congress about the steps that can be taken and the bill that is sitting in a drawer on Capitol Hill. Plus, when to reopen. The tops on Jefferson has been closed for 10, 11 days now. The void hundreds of neighbors are still struggling to fill and how long it might remain. Streaming live from downtown Buffalo, this is 7 News. Thanks for staying with us here on 7 News as we approach the bottom of the hour. I'm Ashley Rowe. 11 days since the deadly shooting at the tops on Jefferson Avenue, the store is still closed. As we've reported throughout our coverage, this Tops is the only major supermarket in what's otherwise a food desert. 
you have to drive at least two miles to find another grocery store in Buffalo. The closest tops is about three miles away, one on the west side, another one in North Buffalo. Jocelyn Person is looking into if and when this tops will reopen. She joins us live now on Jefferson Avenue. Jocelyn. Ashley, many people are telling me that this tops shouldn't be here. Instead, it should be converted into something that brings the community together. People living in the 14208 zip code will forever carry the tragic memory of the mass shooting at the tops on Jefferson Avenue that claimed 10 lives. Now, many are questioning whether this grocery store should reopen or be torn down. I don't necessarily think that people will be comfortable shopping here again if it opens back up as the tops. I do think that maybe they could do something like make it a community center. Some say they won't be able to step foot inside the store again. Unless they remodel the whole inside, make it the produce on the other side, maybe it will be the same. But don't nobody want those images like that you what you saw from the videos from social media. But others say since the community fought so hard for Tops to be on the east side in the first place, it should reopen. Before Tops was here, what did they have to go to? They had to use the corner stores. They had to use the, the stores at the gas stations. They paid probably $5 for some milk, where you can get it for $2.19 at Tops. So we need Tops. We need a Wegmans over here too. We need stop and shop, we need everything. And the need for other grocery chains like Wegmans to set up shop here is what the pastor of Columba Bridget Catholic Church is fighting for. The fact that there's so few grocery stores uh, in this area, we felt that this was the time to do the petition. Our parish council um, approved it, and we have people from all parts of the city on parish council, including the town gardens, apartments. And we've talked to different people at the city and community leaders, and we just felt that the time was right to get in touch with Wegmans. But Councilman Ulysses Wingo says otherwise. For those folks who are saying build another one, it took 10 years to get that one built. If that one gets demolished, what other grocery store major chain is going to come in and provide all of the services, banking, medical, pharmacy, and grocery that TAPS is offering right now? Now, according to TOPS, the plan is to remodel and reopen soon. Now, if that happens, uh, many people here are hoping that the city of Buffalo will increase security at this TOPS location. Reporting live in Buffalo, Jocelyn Person, 7 News. Thank you, Jocelyn. Community leaders and our own Eileen Buckley led an important conversation about removing the stigma surrounding mental health. The Erie County Anti-Stigma Coalition marked the fifth anniversary of their Join the Conversation campaign today in downtown Buffalo. Join the Conversation started in 2017 to help promote mental health awareness and to eliminate the stigma attached to it. Remember, help is always available if you or someone you know is going through a mental health challenge. You can call Crisis Services in Erie County at 834-3131 or in Niagara County at 285-3515. There is a plague, a plague upon this nation. Our country is sickened and outraged. People across party lines agree that what happened in Texas yesterday is a senseless tragedy, but they cannot seem to agree on what needs to be done to prevent future acts of violence like we have seen. The attacks in Buffalo and Uvalde are bringing the debate over gun control back into the spotlight. And that includes a bill in Congress known as H.R. 8. The bill would expand background check requirements for gun purchases. So you could not just buy a gun from somebody else unless a licensed gun dealer or maker ran a background check. H.R. 8 passed in the House of Representatives, mostly along party lines. Only eight Republicans voted for the bill, just one Democrat against it. Congressman Brian Higgins voted yes. Chris Jacobs and Claudia Tenney, who will represent part of Western New York if elected this fall, voted no. Tom Reed also voted no. He has since resigned. The bill now sits in the U.S. Senate. Last week, we spoke with Nick Langworthy, chairman of the state Republican Party. We asked him if tighter gun control laws were needed just days after the attack on Jefferson Avenue. Here's what he had to say. Someone that's willing to go and murder, they don't care about gun laws. We have to get to the root cause. We have to talk about mental health. And we have to, you know, I, I get a lot of questions about, you know, the background, and I think there's going to be things that come out here. Uh, you know, there had to have been some warning signs, and we have to be more vigilant uh, when you see someone that's in this mental state. You know, this was a deranged lunatic that did this and was willing to murder people. 
Langworthy also responded to yesterday's attack in Texas, saying his heart aches for the school and Uvalde community, calling the attack an act of pure evil. He says there is, quote, a special place in hell for the person responsible, calling him a monster. This afternoon in Texas, former congressman and presidential candidate Beto O'Rourke confronted the governor and law enforcement at a news conference, slamming state leaders for what he sees as inaction. Sir, you're out of line. Sir, you're out of line. I'm sir, you're out of line. Please leave this auditorium. I can't believe you're a sick son of a that would come to a deal like this to make a political issue. O'Rourke, who is running for governor, was escorted out of the room. We invited our local members of Congress to take part in a conversation here on 7 News about gun violence. We gave them a chance to talk in studio or on Zoom in a live or pre-recorded interview. Chris Jacobs' office says he has an event tonight and is unavailable. Claudia Tenney's office gave the following response, quote, thanks very much for reaching out. Unfortunately, this won't work with the congressman's schedule today, but feel free to reach out again going forward as we would love to have her sit down with you in the future. We will keep you posted on our efforts to hear from the Congresswoman. Congressman Brian Higgins did accept our invitation. He joins us now live on Zoom. Congressman, uh, firstly, thank you for joining us. Happy to be with you. You know, um, you hear Nick Langworthy say this is a, an issue about mental health. We hear that often, right? When, whenever these cases occur, mental illness, hate, radicalization, a whole range of issues. But there's one constant, it's the weapon, uh, these, the guns that are used in these attacks. So why are we not able to limit access or, or ban guns like AR-15s? Yeah, rhetoric does not substitute for action. And the truth is that you know, there are 400 million guns in America today. Uh, no country uh, on this earth has more guns than Americans do. And assault weapons are designed to do one thing, kill people quickly and in large numbers. If you look at all of these killings, the one in Buffalo, uh, the one in Texas, and all of these other ones, it's typically one shooter with an assault weapon that kills an inordinate amount of people in a very short period of time. Uh, these two killers, the, the, the most recent in Texas and in Buffalo, were 18 years old. 81% oh, of Americans, 81% of Americans, that includes every political persuasion, supports a, a comprehensive background check uh, for all gun sales. 64% uh, of Americans support a ban, a categorical ban, on assault weapons. Now, we had a, a retired police officer, a veteran of, of the Buffalo Police Department, 30 years, mm -hmm. who, uh, who was buried today, uh, who was wake yesterday. Uh, he had a gun, but he was helpless because the shooter that killed 10 people in Buffalo had an assault rifle and he had tactical gear, including body armor. Uh, our police are being outgunned. Our communities are under siege by people who have been radicalized uh, on social media and are doing terrible things to people mm -hmm. on a false premise, you know, replacement therapy. We need a renewal therapy. Congressman, I have seen you at uh, the funerals for the victims of the shooting at Tops. Um, I, I can only imagine what goes through your mind, thinking what, what more can I do to try to make sure that I am not attending more funerals like this. Um, it, it, you, you talked about the challenge of, of, of gun control. Is the filibuster really what's preventing real reform from happening, from getting HRA, for example, to get passed? It truly is, and let me just give you a, a, a very, very clear example. When there was a shooting that killed 26, actually 27, uh, Sandy Hook School, elementary school, in Newtown, Connecticut. In 2013, the Senate uh, voted to impose a background